I'm Darren Levine, and this is DTEC. And today, I wanna to show you the Super Nintendo Classic Mini. It is so darn cute when you actually see it in person. Literally, it fits in the palm of your hand. So let's get right into it. This is a system that basically is like a mini computer, a mini little game system that has built-in games. About 20 or so original Super Nintendo games. And just to give you a quick overview, it is obviously tiny. You've got the power button. Works same as usual. Reset button. This actually doubles as kind of the uh, home button, I would say, because on the controller, which is quite the same as the original, there's no way that I could find you can actually go back to the home screen to select a new game. You gotta actually hit the reset button to do that. It's a little weird, but you've got a fake eject button and a fake slot button, which are there just for aesthetics because you cannot plug anything else into this. Speaking of plugs, you power it with a regular old USB port. It comes with a charger, or not charger, I should say, power plug and then it has an HDMI out. Now speaking of HDMI, the HD part most notably, the biggest disappointment you might have in this if you don't know what to expect, there's no up there's no remastering, these games are in their original glory. They are gonna look just the same and as you can see I've got a really large screen behind me and it's gonna show off all the really, really low resolution awesomeness of these games. These little ports in the front are not really ports, it's just a cover. That's where you plug in the new plug for the controller, which is now falling down a little bit. That's aesthetically pleasing. So I'm probably just gonna maybe take this off. There's really no reason to keep it on there. Snaps right on, and that is it for the body. So let's plug it in and see how she rolls. So here we have the home screen, which is where you'll be taken to when you boot up and or hit the reset button. And when you hit the reset button is when you can do your save points. Say you're playing a game, hit pause, and you hit the reset button. I know, kind of scary. That used to be the way to not save something. And it brings up the home screen again. And the home screen will show a little thing flying around of where you left were in that game. And then you can hit Y, or hit down and hit Y. And then it'll save it for you. Pretty seamless and pretty nice. The other thing is the rewind feature, which basically allows you to have certain increments to be able to rewind into the game to go to those points as well. A lot of folks with emulators will be familiar with that kind of functionality although apparently it's a little more limited than this. It's not as fluid or unlimited as emulators can be. And then if you go up, you get to a couple options. Then we just have manuals, legal notices, language. Then we have some basic options here, which are really, I don't really care, not gonna use those, why bother? But then you go into display options and you have a couple of things here. Now, I won't say one of these is better than the other. You really just go wanna try them each and see which you prefer. Pixel Perfect technically preserves them exactly as they were made. 4x3 is probably how you're used to seeing them. And CRT filter gives kind of a scan line look, which you may or may not prefer. No matter what, you're still gonna have black bars on the side. So they give you these frame options here if you really want them. Now, as you can see, it works pretty much exactly as it used to. And the resolution is exactly what it used to be. It's not up or anything. And one of the more annoying things is once you're in a game, you have to hit the reset button to go out of it. That's the only way to get back to the main menu. There's no home button on the remote controller. If you are tech savvy, you can actually buy a Raspberry Pi kit to basically make the exact same thing. Or if you own something like a Amazon Fire TV box, you can get emulators and ROMs to do basically the same thing. Of course, you're gonna need some controllers. I get XBAL. <laughs> Xbox style controllers for my Fire TV. But you know, there's something nice about having good old nostalgic thing. So you've got a lot of golden oldies here, plus Star Fox 2, which was never released. So I haven't tried that yet. Apparently you need to actually go and complete the first stage of Star Fox 1 to actually go and play Star Fox 2. I kind of appreciate that little bit of unlocking. So it really is just like you are back in uh, high school, middle school, or whatever age you were when this stuff came out. One thing about the controllers, you do get two of them, but they're of course wired. Uh, I do hope that we see some wireless options in the future because that is really the one kind of annoying thing, especially when you've got this big TV and I sit like 
12 feet away from it. So these eight foot cords, I think they are, are not quite long enough. It has given me that little old nostalgic bug of wanting to play these good old games. And of course, introduce them to my uh, import model of a wife who has never played any of these before. So that's kind of fun and cool. And you can get it for $80 if you can find it at all. Hopefully Nintendo does uh, increase its production, unlike when they released the Super, I'm um, sorry, the original Nintendo Classic, which is still at this moment almost impossible to get a hold of. So hopefully you can get one of these. I'm Darren, this is DTech. enjoy. If you like what I'm cooking, there's a subscribe button for that.